Hey everybody, it is Catch to Carve time, and this one is also close to home, but very special. This is for smallmouth bass on the fly. We are going to a local lake tucked in the mountain, and it's a good sized lake, but it is chock full of smallmouth bass. So my buddy Pat and I are gonna go hit the water and see what we can do uh, to catch the biggest fish we can. Smally. It's a big smally. It's a big smally. Anyways, back to the shop. Let's go carve this thing. I, I think I apologize in like every B-roll clip we have. I apologize to my wife for smoking cigars. So, yeah. honey, I'm sorry. I'm gonna smell like a cigar. It's Pat's fault. It's always Pat's fault. It's always Pat's fault. So before you jump into your carving, it's good to use your reference photos, which from my Catch to Carve series, I made a tank, which I will link to up here on how to make an acrylic tank. And I was able to get beautiful reference shots of this fish, this particular fish. If you're going to do a replica, why not have perfect reference photos? I have actually taken magnets and stuck them to some of the screws that surround my work area so I can glance around, see the fish that I'm carving, and get a really good, you know, take on it. I'm going to be making a ton of dust, so I have changed out of my nicer jacket, I've put on my fancy, fancy carving bib, and, well, it's about to get dusty. So I also have a full respirator right here, hearing protection, because when I fire this guy up, it makes a mess. A reoccurring theme with the carving process in general is drawing and redrawing your pattern. So as you can see, it just kind of gets out of hand sometimes. Always keep a good center line to know where you're at and keep things proportional. You also want to figure out a way to remind yourself while you're carving areas to remove because I'm constantly looking at the reference shots you can see strewn all over the place to find out where I need to remove material to get that lifelike appearance. Now, I have different ways of noting that, but continually I just sketch it on there as I carve. At this point, I'm like seeing scales in my sleep, so it is time to switch gears and jump over to the fins. Now, I'm gonna do all acrylic fins for this one, which is something I actually haven't done completely through, so we're gonna rock and roll. I'm gonna start with a piece of quarter inch crappy looking acrylic for the main rear fin, and then the pectoral fins and everything else, anal fins. That's gonna have uh, eighth inch, say hi. hi. Yeah, here, beat it. All made out of eighth inch. And then we will form those, shape them, and make them look pretty. Fins are in and done, and now it is on to getting the tail in. Now the tail, give me a tight fit. I got it tapered very nicely. And I'm going to add a little channel. Boom, that it'll mortise into. It's easy, right?
It's like little treats. Now it's on to the final details, just small scale stuff around where I had to sand to really get the fit perfect. And then obviously those eyeballs, well, they just ain't gonna work. So I have some taxidermy eyeballs I'm gonna put in their place. I'm going to make it gold and brown. Before I get too far with the base coat, I'm going to go ahead and lay down some raw umber for the main pattern on smallmouth that everybody knows. So far I just have what looks like a carp. So, time to put down some raw umber. The foundation is set. We have the raw umber colors for the bars in place and some of the details. I'll come back by hand and also with the airbrush to really hit those harder once we get some more layerings. So I'm going to go ahead and add layers, darken it up on the top and kind of fade it down, get the white back in there, but mute that. We'll be looking really good. 